People of the internet, uh, one of my closest friends, Caleb Hiles, uh, one of the greatest singers on the internet, just released his first collection of original music, which he has been working on for a very long time. Uh, and he released it completely independently with the help of a, a, uh, a ragtag group of music producers, including myself. Um, <laughs> ragtag, I like it. <laughs> and, ragtag group, um, yeah. And I haven't actually heard this album yet, so this is going to be my first exposure. Um, All right. Well, okay, well. <laughs> I haven't heard the whole thing yet. So um, this is going to be my first it's time listening through the whole album because I wanted to do this with you. I wanted to actually. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's different. It's different, John. What can I say? It's a different album. I don't know. It's not. It's a lot of ideas. I wrote it over three years. It's a lot of uh, just a patchwork of genres and 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 uh, and ideas. And I'm just experimenting. It's songwriting for the first time, honestly, truly. Um, so, yeah, that's my only caveat I'll give because I want to. I want to say I like what I wrote. So. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We're going to be listening to um, Caleb Hiles' album, which is called In One Breath. And here it is. Wait, I have to I have to set this so that you can hear it. Yes, please. Uh, Google Chrome. Oh, that's awkward. That looks weird. <sighs> okay, can you hear this? I can. Okay. I'm going to start over. Oh, come on. I've had enough. Okay, starting over. Here we go. Dang it. I'm going to... Maybe I'll refresh the video here so that it starts from the top. I've had enough. I've had enough. I've taken all this time in my head No further along, I can't resolve Stop wondering why it's such a silly question Part of my misdirection I tend to fight when I'm feeling threatened I know I'm just a bag of bones So then why the ache inside? Nice flat seven chord. That's a that's a good that's a good chorus chord progression. I was waiting for the music theory stuff from John. <laughs> don't worry, I don't use a lot of it.
Thank you for the raid, Metal Burb. You can really hear You can really hear Charlie's production influences Yes you can On the yeah. tracks that, that he produces He's on the first three There's a drummer Tony Thaxton Drummed on this From Motion City Soundtrack Oh nice This is his drums Yeah. I'm not doing this, doing this just to 10 out of 10 pre chorus. Nice. <laughs> oh my god, this is so motion city! What can I say? That is such a cool verse, man. Wow. Get up there. Now it seems like I am on my own. Into this frame of mind. Or is it nature that I cannot find? But still I grab this pen to change my future. Yeah. Halo theme is playing underneath it. This cuz. I'm alright, I'm alright, I'll be fine. Yes, you gotta just believe me when I tell you this time. No control, no complaints. Life is like a happy ending. It does not work that way. Whoa! That's 
a punchline. Yeah. <laughs> wow. What a payoff. That's smart. That's some smart writing, Caleb. Can can we pause right there briefly? Yes, because I want I want to say firstly, uh, um, Charlie mix he's mixed the next song too, and he makes these last two songs, and he did a great job. Um, I these live drums though were done were were mixed by Brandon. He mixed the live drums for this song because I I Char Charlie did everything amazing. Um, I just I think these live drums Brandon knew exactly what he needed to do with those, and I knew Brandon would know what to do, and um, he just just mwah, like made them yeah made perfect yeah the the drum mix is crazy that's uh that snare is brandon is a master of dialing in stuff <laughs> that like was that. his the first time things. editing live drums well really you, you did a great job well it's funny because it's Old funny me. because recently I, i'm sure it was after you had finished doing this song brandon said to me john i'm addicted to using live drums now I like I I want live drums on everything. Like he, I remember Brandon messages me, messaging me, and that's funny because I didn't know that that was his first. I didn't even know that he mixed live drums for you on this album. But like Brandon, like legitimately messaged me and was like, "I want live drums on everything now." It's, Man. um, yeah, and I I know a lot of producers who share that sentiment. Um, and uh, yeah. Can I keep yeah, it going no. here? Do you, do you have yeah, more? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm just trying. I think I had a thought about that that, that song in particular, just because I know I did not think people would like that song as much as they have, because it's my like heart and soul song. And when I like, you know, the piano, dun 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 very simple, well known like line. And I was like, I'll just do that, uh, but do it a little differently. But well, I think lyrically, I was like, I I. I that's a that was coming around to being like you know i can get upset and frustrated sometimes when people are going through mental things but it's like think about it from their perspective when they're going through something it's like they 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 have it worse than than you could ever imagine it like you you might be one receiving some of it but you just don't know the battles and how alone that has to feel so writing a song about that i think i think that i i think that's actually what's been really helpful for it or like people really liking it i just didn't i don't know it's also the second song i wrote for the album so like and that's like three years ago so when you've listened to the song over and over and over and over again you just kind of get burnt out yeah but like so you're like i don't even know if i like the song anymore so that's uh, it's it's really yeah. catchy and the the way that you wrote the lyrics is is really really smart like the the that payoff after the bridge is like mm, yeah and I'm then, glad. I'm glad. like the HMO li or whatever that was, yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> the, the mental health care line was brilliant. Yeah, that's no, brilliant. I'm not gonna, I, I was gonna say something because I, I, that came directly from a freaking day I spent like five hours on the phone with four different healthcare yeah. facilities. I've had I similar. Like, gonna... I've had similar experiences very recently where the American healthcare system does not give a damn about your mental health. Mm -hmm. And oh. um, I've had personal experiences with doctors that will just be like, no, you're overreacting. It's not real. I've, I've had, you know, personal God family bless. members where doctors would just tell them to suck it up and when That's they were crazy, like man. suicidal or something. Um, and then they would, then they'll prescribe you a drug that will make you even more suicidal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like for yeah. real. Uh, anyway, let's b b before we get too deep into into oh, that yeah, discussion, that... let's let's continue listening here. This was the the single, so to speak, was uh, was Goodbye Monday, the last Charlie track on the album. Yes, but he helped uh, with the first three. Mental health is important, you guys. Leave your This was the single. Guess Correct. Our time is over now. Tell me all of this will be more than a face and bitter memory. 
the pitch shifted octave layer. Thank you. Yep, yep. That's a that's a char that's a Charlie modern pop trick. People were asking if that was a second vocalist, and I was like, no, it's not. That's very common in popular music right now to Goodbye, Monday. to pitch shift a layer like that. I guess there's more of me to take. Goodbye, Monday. I'm starting over again to That's a really fun bass sound. Charlie's really good at picking bass sounds. Charlie definitely had a big hand in this one, uh, sonically. He's using a specific kind of reverb that's really nice. You hear how those vocals just take up all this space? It sounds like you're in this tunnel. It sounds like you're singing in this tunnel in the, <laughs> in the album stream. That was, that was not the intention. I like it. Did you pick those notes or did Charlie pick those notes? I picked those. How did you guys record that? Did, did you record, like, did you record all those notes and then he just, like, did that vocoder effect after? Yes, yeah, yeah. Because there's a bunch of different ways you can, like, kind of get that sound. payoff that was about a friend of mine back at home in a relationship that he had and i did not tell him and this is my mistake that i wrote a song about him until the day before the single came out Ooh. and he was fine with it and i figured he would be which is why i forgot to tell him but he was cool with it and he actually laughed about it he was like heck yeah There's a lot of downward chromatic motion to the flat seven chord on this album. My, that chord. My favorite. It's a, it's a good chord. You're using more music theory than you realize. Nice, 
Man, I can hear the Motion City soundtrack influence in the working so title. Much of these. The working title for the song was Caleb Likes Yellow Card. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. And that's kind of what the first verse Yeah. Like. That's so funny. Yeah, it does sound a lot like yellow, like early yellow card. It this I said, lights and sounds are one of my favorite albums. It was like after Ocean Avenue. Oh, Caleb, you never told me this. You never told me this. I you, love, dude. That's we've been album, working, man. we've been working together for like eight years now, and you never told me that you were a big fan of uh, lights and sounds. Oh, and I didn't know oh, that man. you liked Reliant K until like last year. We usually talk about music, or we talk about covers and stuff. It's business, man. I can't believe gotta, I can't believe I didn't know this about you. Thunder Scott with the uh, uh, guitar solo and the instrumental. In this house, we love Thunder Scott. That's a sick modulation. So yellow card. I love it. This one's <laughs> sick. Thunder Scott, you, you we can pause didn't, there. He didn't resolve. He didn't resolve the chord. Mm. He questioned me. He said, "You dastardly, dastardly man, Thunder Scott." Tell me something. All right, this is like the super experimental know. part of the album. Like the next four are like Show big experiment. To help me grow, grow with you. That's another flat seven chord. Did you did you write these the chords on the piano and send them to the producers? Yes. Yes. That's you. That's you, Caleb. Using music theory. That there it is! There's a flat seven chord in like all of these songs. I love flat seven chords. Why didn't you tell me? They, they evoke an emotion. What I do? Did you write that on the piano? Yes. Tell what? No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Tonight. Pray my mistakes. I'll hold them high. Well, that's just a fun little vocal effect. No, 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 no. Shut up. And in the quiet of the morning, I can. <laughs> wow! What? And in this
my god that's so good that's so good and you did it all by accident <laughs> oh what key are we in but that's what I've been fed If you're not helping then you might as well be dead That's not who I am And not who I am We're in G I'll be slow to speak And listen more carefully With peace comes the chaos And I picked my side Yeah, that F chord That F chord in G is... And now we're in F. Now we're in... Or no, no, no. No, we're not in F. We're in A. A minor, or we're in C. Holy fuck. All right, my producer did this next part coming up. He did it. His name's Jason. This next part is... Yeah, I know Jason. Yeah. This, this bridge part, all him. Just a fun flute. <laughs> Ooh. Stay inside. Stay inside. Stay inside. You like jazz? We're back in G. Wow. Okay, before we before we go to the ne- was that it? That was the end of that song. Yeah, that was that yeah. was that song. Yeah, that's the end. Of that before song. we go on to the next song, in case in case anybody's wondering, uh, so uh, Caleb was in the key of G major, and he was doing a what what's almost a common chord progression. He was in the key of G major, and he did like a like a a, a one five four or something. It was like a one, four, five. And then you went to the flat seven, that F chord, the last chord in that chord progression, which is the chord that I keep talking about. You keep Mm -hmm. using the flat seven in every single one of these chords. That's why I asked if you wrote these on the piano, because it's in every single one. And that's really cool, man. The fact that eat like and this I, I've talked about music theory a lot on my channel. I'm gonna try to keep this rant brief because I want to listen through the rest of the album while it's without like stopping and starting too much. Sure. But um everybody knows music theory, but they don't realize it because music theory is mm-hmm. just describing what the sounds make you feel. Yep. And yep. you're using this flat seven chord and it kind of gives you this like bittersweet kind of like push. Yeah. Like what yep. what? Oh, and then you're back home to that G chord. And then the thing that you do that is brilliant, that is like actually some next level stuff that you do is you, so you're on a flat seven chord 
and then you're recontextualizing the flat seven chord in the key of G major as the four chord in the key of C major. And then you, that next section of the song, you actually do a key change that's like not only like a perfectly executed key change from like a music theory standpoint, but you're also, um, it's actually a complicated and artsy key change. Like a, a regular key you change. Know me. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, complicated it's, and artsy it's actually it's actually it's not a standard key change because a standard key change uh you you there's two types of key changes that are really common the first is like a broadway key change where the whole song will just go up a step uh you know like at the end of a broadway song the last chorus yes, will just yes. be a little bit higher like whoa and now here's the new chorus you know uh like that sort of thing but uh and then the other type is you'll do uh, you'll do a key change to a what I like to call a related key. So like transposing from A minor to A major, that's a very closely related key. Transposing from A minor to C major, because they share all of the same flats and sharps. They, they share oh. the same key signature. And you didn't do either of those things. You used this already really artsy chord by pop music standards. You used an already very, very artsy chord, this flat seven chord, which, it seems to be like a, a a signature move for you, as it were. Uh, it seems it, like it. it whether it I wanted to, to be, or not. yeah, it seems to be your little your JoJo stand move. I haven't seen that show. I'm, but uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you're using this kind of signature move to go to this flat seven chord on all these songs, and it it ties all these songs together, and then you're using that chord as a pivot chord. And using the melody to reframe that chord, and then, then you're you're pushing up to this A minor, which is like, a, and then it's like you're in, on a different planet in that section of the song, like that that part of the song when you sh when you use that F chord to pivot into the new A minor or C major key, it's like it's like takes you to a completely, it's it's. It's a complete scene change on that song, and it's brilliant, brilliant well, chord progression. And then you do like this, like this inverted C chord to get back up to this at this at this what has now become the four chord in C major in this new key. And it's such a trip, man. That is that's like. That's like the type of thing that I would sit here and figure out writing a Starship Velociraptor track. So the fact that you did that just by poking around on the piano and just playing what sounds good and you arrived at this incredibly complex chord progression um, is, is really a win. It's really a win, man. So congratulations. That is a beautiful... That's one of the coolest chord progressions I've heard all year. And you have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I will tell you this, John, before moving on to the next one. I am actually, like, I, I have it written down in my fun little notebook uh, of, like, goals and bucket lists for the years. I'm, I'm going to actually, like, and I've already started, yeah. like, trying to, to learn music theory. Like, I really want to know what's going on because I've had such a, it's been really inspiring since the album's release and with Goodbye Monday getting released and seeing people's reactions to be like, all right, I think I could probably, if, if like this is your the baseline sort of thing, I, I think I could, I, I know I could do better if I knew more. And something that keeps coming to mind is what you said about, wouldn't you want to paint with all the colors and all the tools at your disposal if you knew you could? Yeah. Like, was it, wouldn't you want that? And I'm like, yeah, I do want that. Yeah. So I've been going through some programs and and learning and trying to, to you know, yeah. actually practice. Yeah. So, so remember this. Whatever note that you're on, in a, like most of your songs are in major keys. Whatever, and so this is that means that uh, this, usually like this main chord, this is the key that we're in. And what you keep doing normally in a major key, you'll go down one step. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. 
Like, because uh, you, 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 yeah. that's an inverted five chord. And the one and the five chord are usually the most important chords in the scale. They are two out of the four chords in a four chord song. But what you do... is that. And that note is not in the major scale of the song that you're in. And you keep doing that, and it's really cool. It brings this common color to the album. Uh, and I, I have stuff like that that I do too in my songs that are kind of like my signature moves and the fact that you're already kind of like I love that I love talking about like what's your signature move as like a as a songwriter like what what chords do you love to use and um, uh, and you're already developing that and you you don't know the ex but once you know the explanation behind it you'll be able to put that chord into every yeah. song that you do and since you obviously like the color of that chord and the texture of that chord in those major keys uh it's only going to make you more and more powerful as a songwriter you know that's the plan man that's the plan <sighs> wow i did not expect i did not expect a chord progression that advanced in that song. Holy crap. I am very impressed. I couldn't recall the name, the place or circumstances. A friendly smiling face, the hurt shown in the glances. chance to think the gaps filled in while I've descended Ooh, let me out I know that I am close and yet we seem so far removed there's something just ahead is it who to be Don't leave Major five me What Oh Caleb you're blindsiding me right now Holy crap these are some really cool chords man Roaming through a haze a fog that's never Tend out the sheets I know that something's Missing Try to There's tell the myself That's the glitch Sometimes you just forget things Sometimes you just forget things Forget Although I am still alive I am not alive Falling and falling The edge of recalling You write these chords too? Yeah. A world that was not meant for me. Becoming less and less of who I used to be. Wow. There's like too much in this one for me to unpack from a music theory standpoint. That's some fun chromatic motion.
minor four chord? Oh my god, that chord progression, bro! We're in D minor, chromatic. Chromatic motion. What? What even? That's a tritone! That's... Oh, dude, that's so good. I don't even know what chord that is. It's like a... That's like a, a inverted minor three or a flat five or so? That's crazy. Supposed to say something here? I guess. Yeah! Here's Brandon. This is Brandon. Yeah. Now, Bra I have to. I have to comment before it goes into it. Okay. okay I gotta okay, say okay, something. Okay. Brandon pretty much wrote like compositionally this song i sent him a verse and a chorus of an idea and he pretty much just formed all of it uh, i did lyrics and melody as per usual but like i put in the credits i make sure to say in here that this is like brandon's the lead uh in position for composition like a hundred percent so just to clarify uh that's i brandon also want i also want to say something about that last song there's even more advanced stuff that you're doing in that song that I, I don't even have time to get into. You're using a lot of really, really cool chromatic motion in that song and like some, uh, some harmonic minor modal stuff that's really, really sick. And, but as I'm, as I'm looking at this chord progression that you're, you know, uh, I can see how you could stumble across that chord progression without realizing how advanced it was, because I'm picturing you sitting at a piano and just going chromatically stepping I, down. I sometimes just, like, I'm doing chords with the hands, and I'm just trying different position, like, yeah. like, and so now I've done it enough where I pick up on certain, like, oh, if I yeah. go from here to here, it's going to sound like this. Because if you did... Otherwise, you're right on. If you had your hand here, and then you just moved one finger, and then one finger, you're just moving the same... Moving the same finger down one note every time, and, and it it's keeps an evil, going. I mean, it's it's meant yeah. to be kind of like a sinister sound. You know, and that's the the topic is sinister. Dude, so I know people that like call themselves music theory nerds who can't apply, like they can't execute that kind of chromatic motion in a chord progression the way that you did in that successful of a of a context because. Um, it's like, it's like, this is like, kind of, like, a, without sounding reductive, like, this is kind of year one music theory stuff, like, doing this chromatic motion, like that, um, is, uh, is really, uh, it's easy to understand, he, here's what it is, um, it's easy to understand what you're doing in concept and in theory, it's easy to understand what you're doing, but a lot of people have a hard time executing that. And you're skipping the theory and going straight to executing it properly, which is really, really cool. Because then it's easier to learn what the names of all those chords are later and go back into your own song and say, okay, what music theory principles am I actually using here? And you've already wrote the song. You already know how it works. Rather than to learn about a concept and then be forced to write a song with a concept that you don't fully understand. You already fully understand the concept because you did it. Um, which is awesome. It's I'm incredibly impressed. And I want you to do this exact same thing that you did with these last two songs uh, for some of these judge and jury tracks that we're doing together. 
I want you to sit down at a piano and just fucking poke out notes because we've we've been talking with Howard and Neil about how they want you to do this Disney kind of theatrical dramatic singing and the chord progressions that you're writing are are perfect for that and you don't even you don't even know it you know so get to get well, to work sit down at the friggin piano and start poking dude it's amazing well keep it up I, I will I will also say that um, this song and two others later oh is it three or two others later any orchestral piece I gave to Ryan Lafford because I knew he could fill in the space too. yeah because he knows you that know, stuff. And just, just, so just fill yeah. it out so when you're poking those notes and doing this chromatic motion down ryan's gonna know how to fill that out because he does mm -hmm. know what you're accidentally doing there which is awesome and it's really cool that you like you kind of accidentally picked exactly the right people to do all of these different uh all of these different tracks based on how they can elevate what your raw material looks like um, that you're writing, so it's really, really great stuff, man. Thank you. There you go again, refreshing all the pages that were left unread. I'm, I'm good, I'm happy to hear that, Kara. I'm very happy to hear that. Perhaps the memory of technology Contractor coming out next week. Nice. We'll have to have a call and uh, I'll walk you through logic. Disconnected, but I think I've always been this way. From the people that disappoint me to the places far behind me. I wonder what is left. Then I thought been touched by the hurting of all things. Yeah, this is Brandon popping off here. Yeah, this is all Brandon. Yeah! We're just wasting time. Oh! Oh, a day to remember! Let's go! Oh, yeah! <laughs> Newfound glory? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This is so warped to her. Oh my god. This is warped to her. This is so warped to her, dude. This is, this is just... Oh, wow. Oh! You're gonna dive right back into that easy core and I'm gonna get so mad. <laughs> Oh, one more, one more. Yeah, build it up, build it up. Here we go, here it is. Yeah! <laughs> Yeah, it does sound a lot like Taking Back Sunday as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Brandon. Okay, I see you. I see you. Yeah. Yeah. For that oh that was rude no resolve that no was resolve rude
The most experimental track on the album, for sure. Cold for me through all my and all my longing. A shallow instinct to do what serves me. Major five. This one's like a mix between Reliant K and Les Mis. <laughs> All right, I'm here for it. This reminds me of Deathbed on five score. That's a classic Caleb Hiles melody move right there. <laughs> classic. Classic Caleb Hiles right there. Dude, I talked about that on stream last night. I already picked up on my tendency to do that. I, I, I think it's so fascinating to talk with other musicians about, about their tendencies like that. That might have been another flat seven chord. I wasn't paying enough attention. Probably. It's probably this. All right. I want to take a pee break real quick. All right. Take a pee break. I drink a whole thing of pee. Well, I Take, well, I'm out to pee, but I drank water. Drink a whole thing. Just, just go, just go. <laughs> I love my pee. Oh my god. Pee pee. Yeah, this album is wild, you guys. This is a, this is a wild, wild ride here. A lot of, a lot of cool stuff. A lot of cool chord progressions that I did not expect. What do the numbers on the chords mean? So... What do the numbers on the chords mean? So, if you are in the key of uh, D major... There are eight notes in most of the scales that you will write songs in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right? So, um, then after you've done those eight notes, 
the eighth note of the scale is the same as the first note of the scale. And then it starts over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So when I refer to a chord as a number, that number is what note in that scale is that chord built on. So a one chord is built on the first note of the scale. That's a one chord because it's built on that first, the first note. So then a two chord is built on the second note of the scale. A three chord is built on the, the third. Four chord is built on the fourth note of the scale. Caleb is taking a bathroom break. So four chords are very common. Right? So the fourth note of the scale. It's built off the fourth note. And then five chords are very common. And then the sixth chord is very common. Seven chords are usually not common. Uh, Caleb seems to really like using these seven chords, but then uh, a flat is making the note one step lower, and a sharp is making the note one step higher. So when I was explaining that Caleb is using a lot of flat seven chords, he's taking the seventh note of the scale. He's taking the seventh note of the scale, and then he's flatting it, which is another word for saying dropping it by one note. Dropping the seventh note by one step, and then that's the note that he's building the chord off of. So he's, he's building a chord off of the flatted seventh note of the scale that he's in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, flat. So that seems to be a chord that Caleb uses a lot of. And then another important thing is that most of these chords will only use other notes of the scale. So the one chord will usually only use other notes in this. And usually you'll skip a note and then skip another note and that's the chord. So if you take all of those notes and play them all together, it sounds like that. And those are all notes in that scale. And then the five chord. You skip a note. So five, seven, and, uh, and two, because it resets at eight. And then if you play all those notes together, it is the five chord. The chord, the chord that starts on five, skips a note, and skips a note. That's called a triad. So it's a, it's a five chord, a triad. Anyway, someone asked what the numbers mean when I say a seven chord or whatever. Hey, th that's good, though, because that's the reason it took me several years to even try to start learning musical theory. It just yeah. <laughs> eventually it became like, I, I want to know these things. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to get right back in it here. All right. Yeah, an arpeggio is just a chord that's spread out. Oh, this is going to be the feels song. These last four are all. Yeah, I know. I know bonks. some. I know a couple of these last four. You do. Is this Ryan? Good choice, Ryan. I knew it was Ryan. I heard the oboe. I was like, that's Ryan. This is a Ryan song. Maybe if I was more fun, maybe sunnier than they would see me. 
Yes, Matt, that's applicable to any instrument. Ryan. Oh. oh, Ryan. I wrote this one at uh, Kara's parents' house at the on this really old piano. Oh. They just moved away. Oh no. But it felt like they left long ago. Wow. I am the afterthought, and I deserve to be so forever trapped in mediocrity. Please, Dad, don't fight for me. So I'll believe it for you I know you're proud of me Or the idea of what I could be Just tuck me in and say a prayer And leave a light on for me Wow That flat seven! Oh, Ryan's doing some next level stuff. But if there is to be first and last and better and worst, yeah, then that must mean that there's more like me than them. Hey, mom, I found it. They love me like you said. Wow. Special in the end. It may not be a lot, but I think they need me to. I'll keep a light on so alone I'll never feel. We can pause it real quick because this wow. is the one you did. Wow. Um, also, really on that bridge, because we, Ryan and I, because I, I sent him the verses and the choruses and I did not know what a bridge would do for a bridge. And I just had a day. I forgot where I was, but I had voice memos and I just sang out what I wanted for the bridge. And he formed all of that around it. Like he did yeah. all of that, that bridge portion. And it just like it came to life. Like that's it's, I could never have thought of all the stuff he put around it. Like there's insanely good. There's two. Th I, uh, I'm going to have to, call it quits on the stream in exactly 30 minutes and no less. So gotcha. I want to make gotcha. sure that I'm not spending too much time, uh, stopping and starting, but, um, yeah. Um, there's two things I love about that song. The first thing is, um, I guess they're kind of connected. Uh, they're like you're not like y you and I have talked a lot about um lyrical complexity and lyrical simplicity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. You you and I have talked a lot about like the spectrum between like poetic and complex lyrics versus <laughs> yeah. like simple and straightforward lyrics, and these lyrics are really simple but they are but that's why they're so poetic and that is uh, that's like my favorite kind of of lyrics you're not like mm. 
the darkness overtakes me and I don't know what it means yeah. to feel anymore and the the my the blood in my heart is seeping like you're not like you're not trying to be deep you're 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 showing us imagery yeah you're just you're just but that is so much more powerful so many people so many people will try to be like oh my god i can't live without you i won't give up the fight no like the little girl it's a little girl and she can't find any friends like fuck man it's not yeah. it's not That's complicated it's, it's not like you're not trying to write you're not trying to write any Shakespearean stuff. It's like, it's a little girl and she can't find any friends. And that is hurting me emotionally more than some edgy kid in an emo band trying to be deep. You're just telling us a story about someone who's going through something that most of us... Yeah, it's, it's, you're not dressing up the words. Somebody in chat, that's perfect. You, it's plain words. But those words are well chosen and pointed. And that's so much stronger than trying to use, you know. Yeah, it's vulnerable. It's simple. Uh, yeah, it's that's, that's so smart. And that's a lot of what I love about my favorite moments in this album are these moments where you're like, the HMO doesn't get it. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like we're there with you. Like the little girl doesn't have any. Fr uh, little girl's best friend just moved away, and d dad's trying to fight, but. Fuck, man. That's good. That's good. That's good writing. So many people mess that up. So many people mess that up. upon the waiting What could I possibly do or say To keep you safe To keep you laughing through the day I don't think that's it, Kaiba. It's not about, it's not about the genre. Seven? No, but I'm mad at you because I would I would have put one in. <laughs> I could have put a I could have put a flat you seven could've. in there, but I didn't know that you were writing all these other songs with flat like seven. It's my first time hearing most of these. Well, it's because I am. And please forgive me for when my feelings I could have put one right there. That could have been a flat seven. Dang it, Caleb. Thank you, John. And sometimes I won't have the answers, but maybe we'll learn them together. I'll name her so there are parts, parts of you. I forgot about this part. That is similar to some of these other chord progressions that you're doing here. That's a flat seven! Yes! I say it, we yes! saved it! We saved it! That's a flat seven! <laughs> Woo! Oh, I love that harmony. I love that harmony. That was your decision to go low. Oh, but that's... that's you, you did the... You, that, that harmony wrote itself. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to do anything. Yeah. 
At least you let me resolve. Oh, I let you resolve. Yeah. <laughs> One song. Oh, man. One song to resolve. Oh. And then into this one. This is the first one oh. you helped me with, I think. Yep. I remember yeah. when this was going to be a... Uh, this is going to be like, pop punk. Yeah, it's going to be very gonna pop This is going to be a pop punk song, and we just... I realized that it it didn't... It, that wasn't it. And it's so weird listening to the ones that I did on this because this was like this is yeah, a, a long time ago. Man, I got so lucky. I accidentally did a lot of the same chord movements that you were writing on your own on this album. I just sent you a vocal memo of that chorus, and you made up all yeah. the stuff underneath it. It it stretches out one one line longer than it than that kind of line normally would. I had to find an extra chord to to, to stretch out. major two that's a flat seven you wrote a flat seven. Oh my god <laughs> keep it Coach wow Coach. guys i did not know wow I can't believe that, man. I can't believe that. I put a flat seven in a very important moment in both of these, and you're out here putting flat sevens as your signature move. That's insane. Yeah, it's been a while since I've heard this. Is that John? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, shoot, that's a signature sound for yeah, you. Yeah, the riser. Wow. That is so serendipitous how much of that song ended up lining up so well with the rest of the album and I I I did not intend that. I did not do that on purpose. That's wild. 
You helped with this track too. I did. Uh, at the end of it. Not as much. I can't yeah, take Ryan any. The, yeah. the heavy load. Of, I can't take any credit. Home. I can't take any credit for this one. I just did clean up. Clouds above just passing by. I know this is key of C. Bodies warm by candlelight. Strangers born and strangers die. Can you feel your insignificance? Some great cause or some great blight. Not in creed nor in device. Drawn to something I can't find. Wonder is the greatest mystery. And in one breath, I don a crown of thorns. And in one Feel my spirit soar. Such a good melody. And in one breath, it's all made new. And in one breath, it can't be true. In just one breath, the pain inside will soon subside. That's a really good melody. Thanks. It arcs very well. Flooding waters fill the home. That's such a good harmony. <laughs> That's so good. True love's face, I can't recall memories. They fade and so do. I think that violin was something that I added. It is. This is where your influence starts. Yeah. I almost can't even tell because Ryan and I really blend together when we're doing soft songs. Mm-hmm. That's such a good melody, dude. This is a flat seven, right? Yep. Right there. That's a flat seven. <laughs> and you put these two back to back. And I'm doing that same piano thing yep. that I did on the last track. You dastardly man, Caleb. did this piano right mm -hmm. that's exactly what I would have done that Mark Cohen moment there
Wow. Wow. What's that? Yeah, you should be very proud of this, Caleb. Thanks, man. You should be very, very proud of this. This is, well, uh, is uh, and this is this is your first, this is your first songwriting excursion on your yeah. YouTube channel. <laughs> I, yeah, um, yeah, uh, really, really good. No, really, really I'm good. I'm uh, I I I. I'm proud of it. I'm happy with it. Um, it. It took so long to get together because it just took, you know, three years of on and off writing and then a sort of sprint near the end because I just got inspired. But now that we've been doing all the stuff that you and I have been doing and even, you know, aside from that, I've been working on the second out, like my the second independent album, like I'm just more like I'm more invested and fired up about it and wanting to prioritize it more. So, yeah. I don't know how I mean, I don't know how you are with album cycles, but it's like, oh, I'm I'm ready to like this was coming out and I'm so excited to see how people were going to listen to it and see what still see what people think, but my head was already in like yeah. album 2 and judge and jury. Like I was yeah. already there and excited for that stuff. Yeah, you know? it was the same way with me and the Starship album. Like the album was coming out and I was already just writing other stuff. Um Yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure it's weird for you to listen back to it, like, to sit down and listen to the whole thing, uh, especially several times over the course of the past few days at this yeah. coming out, because like you said, that's definitely something that happened where you kind of get fatigued, where you, these songs have been so close to you, to your, um, these songs have been, s like, sitting at the front of your mind, um, taking up so much shelf space in your thoughts <laughs> yeah. for, for years, uh, yeah. while you're, you know, bringing this album together and, and writing the songs and producing the songs and recording the songs, performing the songs, marketing the songs, releasing the songs. And, um, it's tough to, it's tough to listen to them as a listener once you've done that. Yeah. 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 You're kind of vicarious. And that's why I think it's dangerous sometimes, I guess, now that I've released my own thing that like you leave it up to people to form opinions because in a way you're kind of a clean slate all of a sudden when the music comes out because it's been so much right here that you're just like, well, I think I liked it. Like, I, I'm pretty certain I liked what I did here. Yeah. I've, I hope they all did. Cause I don't, I'm not a good judge at the moment. I've noticed you know? that. I've noticed that as well with my own writing. I've noticed that as well. Um, I'll get so tired of the songs that I've been working on for such a long time that I'll kind of have to like completely just like, like reset i'll have to like yeah. like kind of clean the toilet <laughs> i guess yeah like someone wiped yeah. the hard drive of yeah. my ever remembering and then anything about that song you kind of like you, like and i'm sure that you know the next couple months or whatever you'll probably do this as well and you know some of the songs are going to age better than others at least oh, i yeah. found for surely it, for surely. you but they might not age the same for you as they will for the listener yeah. Um, and it's such a, it's, you know, people don't talk about that very, like, people will talk about, like, oh, I wrote this song and it's a hit, but I hate it. It's like, uh, they'll talk uh, about yeah, it, yeah. they'll talk about it in a, in a superficial way, but they won't talk about, like, um, the relationship between the writer and the writing and how that relationship grows the more distance there is between yourself and the, the act of writing that. Um, yeah. and, uh, yeah, man, it's, uh, there's so much that I love about this album and to be honest with you, um, I went into this blind, not really knowing what to expect and, uh, it blew me away, man. Like not, not even, I'm not even saying that just because we're on stream together and it's, it's, you know we're supposed to hype each other up because that's part of our shtick as sure, sure. you know, like I'm not, I'm not just saying that to gas you up. Like legitimately there was stuff in here that completely blindsided me with how good, like amazing, well executed it was. Uh, not just like, Oh, you know, somebody did something cool with a guitar part. It was like, you came up with that idea 
and uh, and then you assembled the right people to do, you know, to to do the stuff that you couldn't do. And uh, but all all those ideas, man, uh, I did not expect that. I appreciate that because you had I mean, told that, me that means the most coming from you. Well, dude, like you you had told me like who else was doing tracks on the album. You know, you had told me that uh, you had told me that Charlie was doing some tracks, and you had told me that Ryan was doing a bunch of tracks, and then. Mm-hmm. There's other people like Jason and um, Alicia Michelle, who I had not heard of prior, Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. who did like some of these other things. And obviously, uh, Evan Scott. uh, And uh, and without having the context, um, without having the context of what they were doing, it was like, what is this album? Like... You know, because I knew what I was working on for you for this yeah. album. I was like, okay, I'm doing these really emotional piano ballads and like, you know, kind of uplifting switch foot kind of music for Caleb. Uh-huh. On the, I was like, what? Like, Charlie makes Minecraft techno. You know, like, <laughs> what is this album going to be? But you, I mean, you know, credit where credit is due, man. Like, you really, uh, like, I don't know how you made charlie's like electronic techno pop production and my you know rock man plays billy joel (laughs) piano i don't know how you made those two things fit together on the same album but you you put one at the end yeah one at the beginning i created distance (laughs) but but it's like but it's like chapters it's like chapters yes, yeah, of the story. Yeah. Like that's so that's, yeah. that's some giga brain stuff right there to have like and and you you kind of mentioned to me off camera about how this album is kind of about like the journey of life and and child yeah. like childhood and getting old and the parallels of like your journey as a like a child and then kind of rediscovering some of these childhood themes as you get older yeah. and like like feeling the same things um the parallels between like like obviously the album art is uh, a, an adult that's holding hands with a, a newborn and a, an old like I mean that yeah. the the album yeah. art explains it better than I'm explaining it. Uh, but the fact that you start out with these three pop songs and then you have like these like excited vibrant pop punk, uh, and then it's like. It's like you hit a midlife crisis at the exact middle point of the album and start getting old and thinking back to your youth and and getting this you know nostalgic and and regretful. It's crazy. Like I don't know how I don't know how you came up with this with so many separate people putting their hands into these songs. Uh, that's crazy, man. That's absolutely insane. And there's a lot of I mean I could talk about this for a while, but I do have to. Uh, stop the sure, stream sure, sure. shortly. We can talk a little bit longer, but I want to I want to gas you up some more before I leave. Um, <laughs> uh, we could talk for a while about um, like all of the different things that you do on this album that that people will listen to it and they'll appreciate all of the feelings that it gives them, but they'll never understand how much work and how specifically you had to do something exactly the right way in order for Mm -hmm. certain parts of this to come together. Like Mm -hmm. I could talk about how much of a madman Caleb is for trusting what six different completely separate producers to, to take his vision for these songs independently and disconnected from each other. And then somehow through sheer force of will, (laughs) <laughs> Caleb is is pulling all of these different, you know, completely different creative minds together into one project that makes sense. Because six whole ass people. Yeah, like that's that's. I could never do that. I could never trust six different producers to do my ideas justice in a way that where I wouldn't be like constantly breathing down their necks. Um. I'm baffled. And you know, all these little things that you do, you you like you had Brandon mix a lot of these. He did um, vocally pretty much handled pretty much yeah. handled all of them except for I think yeah, he, uh, Charlie's. He, so you had Brandon do the technical side of the back end whenever 
whenever you hired someone who couldn't do that on their own because they were a, like a an, an orchestral arranger or sure. whatever, uh, that w whenever you hire someone who's not as competent on the technical side, you bring Brandon in. Uh, and when you know that somebody like Charlie or somebody like me uh, can handle the production side, you leave that to me or Charlie. Like, there's all these things that you did that, like, I'm looking at this list of these credits and being like, wow, Caleb is really, he's really paying attention to, you know, how he needs to split up this work. But that's tough, man. Delegating in, in the, the level of sheer complexity that you did is insane. And... Uh, it feels like you. It feels like a. It feels that's like good. an expression of Caleb. You know. That's good. Yeah, I definitely wanted to make sure on the first album, like I, I at the very least, I came through. Like what, what I want to say, and you know, lyrics are always first and foremost for me. I, I, I my independent albums are always going to be the most like poetic slash like i don't care about rhyme scheme i I'll, if it happens it yeah. happens i'm trying to have a point on certain songs um and then the stuff that i would do otherwise is more like let's hone it in let's let's narrow well, let's let's find that spot i don't and think I'm it's sort of like i don't think it's necessarily rain. attached to that at all because for, for me it's not a like you know that's a separate conversation about whether or not any of these songs could stand to gain from like trying to make them rhyme like that's a different mm -hmm completely like very long-winded philosophical debate that we sure. could have about that but like th that's not relevant like the what what's relevant is that uh you were very focused on what you wanted to write this album about and even if like a couple songs were about a friend's breakup or a couple songs were about uh something just something in passing that gave you an idea uh it feels like a like one story um and that's another thing that's incredibly hard to do and um, lastly, I mean, obviously, amazing work. It's an amazing album. But the other thing that I think is really cool about this project is that, um, and I think I mentioned this to you uh, last time you were here. Um, I don't remember if it was on stream or not. I don't remember if we were streaming or if we were just talking because that last trip was a blur. Um, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> but um, something that's really fascinating uh, and, and cool and feels... I take a lot of pride uh, for both of us. Uh, I'm proud of both of us for this reason. Um, it feels almost like even though we didn't even though we didn't mean to do this um like for example this album for you you've covered a lot of you've covered a lot of broadway songs that are very theatrical and and tell these stories you've covered a lot of a, a lot of disney songs that are very theatrical and tell a very specific story usually with pretty plain words uh, and with a certain type of melody, a certain type of chord progression. Uh, you've covered a lot of Steven Universe songs, a lot of, uh, you've covered a lot of songs from a certain, you've covered a lot of songs from a certain place on the internet that is very much um, concerned about mental health and self-care. Um, mm. uh, and it's almost like you managed to capture the sum of all of the covers that you've ever done in your career in a bottle for this album. And I'm sure you didn't mean to do that, but it's got like the positive mental health vibes of Steven Universe while also having the, the theatrical storytelling of Broadway and Disney. Um, and that's really cool because you're doing uplifting rock music better than Skillet. You're doing... Uh, mental health awareness music better than Steven Universe. You know, you're in many ways you're doing Broadway storytelling better than Broadway, and that's really cool because to me that means that um, we've got a shot. Like, we don't have to just sing other people's songs for the rest of our careers because the reason why people are coming to your channel is 
for these things, this theatrical uh, singing and storytelling, uplifting positive music and like sort of mental health sort of um, whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and somehow you've you've managed to you managed to capture all of that and do it better than all of the separate things that you've covered. Um, and that's awesome. And that's exactly what I've kind of been accidentally stumbling across with my own album is like capturing all the different chapters of all the different things that I've done. And, uh, I'm just really, I'm just really proud of us, man. Uh, it feels good. Same. It does. It does. And thank you for taking the time to, to listen to the album and, and do a stream with me about it. I, yeah, I, I promise I wasn't trying to do a scratch my back, scratch your no, kind of thing when I did Starship. I, as, I genuinely wanted to do as that. As soon as I knew that you were coming out with this album, I'm like, I'm going to get Caleb back. I'm going to get Caleb back for, for that. <laughs> I know you didn't. I don't, I know you weren't trying to do that, but. Um, sure, sure, sure. No, I'm, yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it, though. I, I'm, I'm super stoked for obviously what we're doing with Judge and Jury. I'm, I'm beyond stoked for that. I feel like if there are people who weren't crazy about this album, I'm just like, I'm just basically saying, please, please, please hang on. Because I'm almost certain that if you didn't weren't really about this album, you will be about the the next one coming out. Like, I'm, I'm very confident in that. Well, anyone, anyone who says that they don't like this album is just probably wrong. So don't worry about that. <laughs> if, if well, some, I'm, I'm like, stoked. cause the only reason that somebody would say that they don't like this album is if they listen, if they listen to the first three tracks and they don't realize that there's other stuff besides Charlie pop music on the album. If a kid, like if a kid loves skillet and they don't make it to the Brandon track, then they, you know, they don't even know what the album is, you know. That's that's the only that's true. the but, only yeah. way that I could see a kid saying like, "Oh, I don't like this album." It's like, okay, well, you haven't listened to the whole thing because every single kid that is subscribed to your channel can find something that they would love on this album. Um, I would hope so. Yeah. Well, thank yeah, you man. so much, John, for the stream. Thank I, you. I, I'm, I'm, for I'm stoked for it. Blessing us with such sick music, and. Uh, Absolutely, absolutely blown away, man. Very amazing work. Uh, unfortunately, I, I do have to cut us short here. Um, no worries. I'm sure we'll talk more about this soon, uh, hopefully on another stream, but I am going to go get some food. And uh, Yes, yes, please, please. Yeah. We'll eat. But thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, we just listened to Caleb Howells' new album, In One Breath. It's available everywhere. You can get signed CDs for a limited time. Stream it on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, all those places. And, of course, there's a full album stream uh, that came out two days ago on Caleb Howells' channel. Check it out. Uh, and you guys are great. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time. See y'all.